Statistical mathematical fact never has been down has broken every single record. There is no asset that has come close. It's the only thing in the industry that was not touched, that was not hacked, and it never fails doing what it promised in 2009. It's never What's failed. the best performing asset the world has ever seen? And you'll find out. What I wanted to talk bad. to you very briefly about, well, it's probably not going to be so brief, is the fact that I, I wanted to pound, I wanted to start repounding the table on on a message that I have consistently kept in your faces almost the entire year for over not only just this year for over a year now I've been preparing you for what I'll just loosely term as Bitcoin's having year. All right, so we're in 2024 and it's Bitcoin's having year, right? So April, what was it? Uh, April 19th. Bitcoin went through its fourth halving. Bitcoin's halving years are very special and because it's almost as if Bitcoin has its birthday every four years, like every leap year, right? It has its birthday every four years. And in a way, nothing in between these four years really matters. Everything in between Bitcoin's halving years are really basically noise, up and down, rockets to the upside, crashes to the downside, Long periods of consolidation, do nothing periods, all of that really doesn't matter. What really matters at the end of the day is where Bitcoin is every four years on having day to having day to having day to having day. That's all that matters. And a lot of us sort of get we get wrapped up into and confused by and thrown and tricked by all of the noise that happens in between. So having years are very important for that reason and many others. But what I've been preparing you for or what I've attempted to prepare you for and consistently pound the table on is the fact that a consistent pattern happens with Bitcoin every having year. I believe that Bitcoin is one of the easiest assets to actually predict because its monetary policy is upfront, transparent, and known over the next 100 plus years. It doesn't change like a politician. You don't have to rely on surprises or earnings or anything like that. TikTok next block virtually for the most part, every 10 minutes, you know what's being issued, you know what's going to happen. Every 2016, is it 2016 blocks, um, there's a difficulty rate adjustment, which makes Bitcoin conscious. So it, it adjusts itself to the environment, you know, roughly every, what is it, every two weeks or so. That's crazy. So it is the most predictable, in a broad sense, the most predictable asset money that we've ever had expo had exposure to as a, as a human species, right? So every four years, there's this predictable tendency. And the tendency is for Bitcoin to, during the first part of the year, take a bump to the upside, which Bitcoin did this time, same, same as it always does, takes a bump to the upside. That's the first part of the year. Then in the middle of, then it subsides. So the first part of the year is a bump to the upside and a subsiding. That's the first part of the year. Every having year, go back and test me on this if you if you dare do. Every single having year, a bump to the upside and then a subsiding. That's the first part. Then it spends the middle part of the year vacillating, jostling around, right? What's Bitcoin? That's where we are now. It's we're in the jostling around period. It, we're in the jerking, the jerking the people who think they're smart enough to trade Bitcoin around period. That's the middle of the having year. The jerking the idiots and the bozos around period. That's where we're in now. We're vacillating between fifty and seventy thousand. We are killing though. We're killing the moon boys by shooting to the upside and then crashing and we're killing the shorts by crashing first and then zooming back to the upside that's the jostling around kick the bozos in the balls in the teeth period that's the middle of every single freaking having year don't believe me go back and do your research every single time but omg the end of the year by presidential election time and i believe that the having 
that happens every U.S. presidential election year is not a mistake by Satoshi Nakamoto. I think that shit's on purpose. And I think that it moons during the presidential election time on purpose. Yes, I believe that. Just to be a freaking middle finger to the system and to be in your freaking face. It's mooning by U.S. presidential election time every single freaking having year. You don't believe me? Go back. You've only got four of them to look back on, right? So just go back and do your research. So what does this mean if I'm right and I am right? This means that you have just about until October to get your shit together. You have just about until October to get yourself to one Bitcoin if you're capable of doing that. And you haven't done that yet. And if you haven't done that yet and you have the capacity to do that, I want to ask you why you're so blind and dumb. Because at no other time in Bitcoin's history is it more clear that not only is this here to stay, not only is this the best performing thing humans have ever experienced in all of human the human evolutionary cycle or human life. Not only is this the most secure thing that human beings have ever had the ability to have, to possess and hold, not only can it not be stolen, taken, confiscated, inflated, debased away, it's becoming more so. It is more that today than it ever has been in in history. In 2020, it was riskier to buy Bitcoin than it at at four thousand dollars than it is today at seventy thousand dollars. It is safer. It is a safer buy at 70 than at four thousand. And at four thousand it was a safer buy than at four hundred. And at four hundred it was a safer buy than at four dollars. And at four dollars it was a safer buy than four cents. Bitcoin gets exponentially more safer every freaking 10 minutes. Do you realize this, people? That every 10 minutes, Bitcoin becomes harder. Every 10 minutes, Bitcoin becomes scarcer. Every 10 minutes, Bitcoin becomes more invincible, exponentially so. Every 10 minutes, it gets taller. Every 10 minutes, it gets longer. Every 10 minutes, it adds to itself. So if you weren't able to kill Bitcoin 10 minutes ago, it just became exponentially more difficult to kill it this 10 minutes. It just became exponentially more difficult to hack it the next 10 minutes. It just became became exponentially more impossible to debase it, to ban it, to stop it, to kill it, for it to go to zero. Every 10 minutes in your face, in my face, it grows, it expands, it gets taller, it gets bigger, it gets more powerful, it gets more invincible. And if it does this every 10 minutes, imagine what it does every four years. And so here we find ourselves, guys, in one of the most important years. I would say this year is the most important year of Bitcoin's entire life. Why? Because it's better than it ever has been. Why? It's safer than it ever has been. Why? It's more secure than it ever has been. Why? It's more invincible than it ever has been. It's more unconfiscatable than it has been, than it ever has been. It's better than it ever has been right now, today, than any other time in the freaking past. And so I would then once again ask you, if you have the capability to get to one Bitcoin and you haven't yet, why are you so blind and dumb? Why do you not see this? Bitcoin's the best performing asset of every using every single metric you can humanly think of or create. It has beat the pants off of everything that human beings hold dear. And it is about to outprice you forever. Listen to me, people. I'm going to repeat that. It's the best thing that human beings have ever been exposed to. It's the best thing that you will ever have in your entire life. And it is about to leave you forever. Now, I'm not saying that you won't be able to access it. What I'm saying is the wealth building, wealth, the life changing, generational 
trajectory changing capacity of Bitcoin is leaving you in a few weeks. You will never, ever, 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 ever again have the ability to change your future the way you can change it now within the next few weeks. But you've only got another fucking few weeks. Do you understand me? You are going to get unpriced. You're going to get outpriced. I promise you this. Hold me to it. You mark these. You take a clip of my words. Show them to me by the end of the year. Put it in my face. I want you to. You will never have this opportunity again in your entire life. Your children will never have this opportunity. Kids not even born in your family, your entire generational bloodline will never have the opportunity that you have today. And guess what? I know it. I know 80% of you are sitting here missing it. It's the 80-20 rule. I guarantee you. Do you realize, people, that every... Every if you choose to not have Bitcoin, you're selling Bitcoin. Think about it. You choose to buy Apple stock. You just you sold Bitcoin to buy Apple stock. Oh, yes, you did, because it could have been Bitcoin. So it's the same as selling it. If you buy a a, a useless piece of contraption that you think means something to you today and three months from now, it'll be in the closet collecting dust. You sold Bitcoin for that contraption. You're selling your future every time you do not put it in Bitcoin. Now, I'm okay if that's meaningful and useful for your life. But a lot of you waste your resources on bullshit. You're buying shirts with other men's names on it that don't care about you. You're buying purses to show off for your neighbors and cars. I did that shit, too. Guys, I had 33 cars, two warehouses and 24 hour drivers. I had three drivers on eight hour shifts just to make sure I had a driver every every minute of the 24 hours. They were responsible for keeping my cars clean, doing all the maintenance, the oil changes, the whatever. And they were responsible for removing the which cars were in the front of the, the garage and which ones in the back. The most likely that I were going to take. I had two custom limousines. People listening to this broadcast now have probably driven in my custom made limousines if they're with me long enough at 33 cars. Eight homes around the world. I, sp- I spent millions of dollars a year at dinner tables. Fucking ridiculous. And I think back on these times, right? Private air, private air travel waste. All that bullshit. What if I put that into Bitcoin? I was spending Bitcoin in 2010, 2011. I was spending it. I was spending my future. We still have that opportunity today. Bitcoin can still make a difference. It will forever provide self-sovereignty, no matter when you get it. Even the latecomers will be able to have self-sovereignty. Those that come into Bitcoin when it's millions upon millions of dollars a, a unit, a coin, they come in late, they will still be able to enjoy self-sovereignty. They will still be able to enjoy decentralized money. They will still be able to enjoy an asset that can't be stolen, debased, taken from them, confiscated, or inflated away. These are things that are eternal in Bitcoin. So don't get my message twisted. What I'm saying you're going to miss out on is the generational bloodline change you can make for your entire life today. That's still available, but this is the last one. This is the last go because the next cycle is in the millions of dollars and your little one hundred dollar DCA a week or month or whatever is not going to do it. You'll get self-sovereignty. You'll get unconfiscatable money. Yes, forever. But you won't get bloodline change. Do you understand me?
The opportunity is now. It's the last one. That's why I'm pounding the table so hard. There was a time in the U.S. American, the the so-called American history, where they used to have free land runs. You've read about these things, right? Free land runs. They gave out free parcels of land to encourage exploration, to encourage families to venture further west. And they would announce these free land runs at saloons and shops with bulletins on the wall. There would be a guy handing out flyers in the middle of the town square with a bell. Come on out, my... Tomorrow for free land run, bring your families, free land run, 12 noon tomorrow, free land run, bring your families. And families would come up, join this race at 12 noon. They'd have chalk lines creating the, the, the land parcels. And one guy would be standing at the starting line with a gun and he would yell out instructions When I shoot this gun, whatever family member you chose, the fastest one, hopefully, that family member is to start running like his entire future life depends on this run. And he's to run until he hears my second shot. And when I shoot the second shot, he is to drop to his knees and take the wooden stake that we give him. And he is to stake his claim in the ground. Ever hear that term, stake your claim? That's where it came from. America's free land runs. Some of these families today are the wealthiest families in America. The ones that understood the value and never let it go, never sold it, passed it on from generation to generation. There are thousands of Kids, families that still live off of the wealth from a fucking free land run hundreds of years ago. I am telling you that there is a new America. There is a new land called Bitcoin. There's a new digital world where the land runs used to be free. They're not free anymore. They used to be. Bitcoin used to be at zero. It's not free anymore. But it's still cheap because in the American history, if you read properly, you'll realize that these land runs stopped being free and started being cheap land runs to entice further frontierism. It stopped being free, but it started being real cheap. We're in the still real cheap phase. Now, you can still buy land in America today. You can still enjoy the benefits of land ownership. You'll probably always be able to do that, but it won't create generational wealth for you anymore. Oh, no. I don't care what your YouTubers, your real estate Google mogul YouTubers say to you. You're not changing your generation by buying real estate today. Bullshit. That era is gone. Do you understand? Oh, you might make a living. You might scrape by bragging about, oh, my rental income is a $1,500 a week, a month. Really? That's what you're bragging about? You put up $250,000 to brag about your rental income of $1,500 a month? Are you fucking kidding me? That's not generational wealth. That's not setting up kids and families that are not even born yet in your bloodline to be secure for the rest of their lives. That's not happening with land anymore. I'm telling you that era is gone. But we now are in that era in Bitcoin. There is a new land. It is a digital land. It is a new world. It is a digital world. And that digital world is sucking the analog world into it at a rapid speed. It took our pictures from us. All of our pictures have been sucked into the digital world. When's the last time you've held a freaking physical photo album in your hands? Your pictures are gone. They left you. They left to a diff to live in a different world. That world is digital.
the digital world, the digital America. Your movies left you. Your mail left you. Else, for some of you, your dating is over there. Your beautiful girls, guys, are living in the digital world. You talk to beautiful girls you've never seen except digitally today. Everything has left you for the new world, the new frontier. And while the land in this new frontier is not free anymore, it's still cheap. But you've got only weeks for it to be cheap. That's my main message here today. Cheap is going away forever. Ever. People, listen to me forever. Never, never again will you see Bitcoin at 3000. Never again will you see Bitcoin here ever. And so it still matters at 60,000. It'll matter less from a generational wealth perspective at half a million because the little bit that you put into it will stop being generationally significant. Again, you will always be able to benefit. You will always be able to have self-sovereignty. You will always be able to have freedom, money, but generational trajectory change capacity. That's what's leaving you in a few weeks. What does this freaking mean? You better get to work. That's what it means. You better make everything else in life second to this over the next few weeks. Nothing is more important for your children, for your wives, for your husbands, for your future, for your grandkids, for your future lineage, your future prodigy, prodigy. Nothing is more important than the next upcoming weeks, people. Now, if you want to debate me on that, and take roll the dice on me being wrong, I'm afraid. I know this might sound cocky, but may God bless your soul. Let me see if you got anything for me here, guys. <laughs> By the dip says, Ali, if, if this career path ever fails and Bitcoin fails, become a preacher. <laughs> I told you, man, I lived in church my whole childhood, man. Crazy. That's, that's where it comes from, you know? Um, Leader Face is asking, Oliver, which cycle do you think exchanges will have a liquidity problem? I don't see this one happening, but maybe the next one. That's a good question because, you know, exchanges throughout Bitcoin's history have always had liquidity problems because it's very difficult to resist the human urge to to fuck with things that you have control over. So when someone gives you control over their value, the person that receives the value over time, it starts to affect them and it and and it becomes easier and easier for them to betray the trust. It's just a part of the human species. It is not meant for the human species to give power and control over to someone else. This is why it doesn't work. We weren't born to do that, to give another man my power, to give another man my God-given control, my wealth, my resources. We were not designed to do that. So when we hand it over to someone else, it never works, ever. In history, I've got a 100% backing on this. It never has worked in history, ever. Every trust has been violated. So now we have a parallel system running alongside an inferior, broken down, dilapidated system that has always failed us every single time. But we can transfer from one system to the other now, we never had that capability. Bitcoin is that alternative parallel system. We never had a parallel system. We just had to wait and hope that the next system after this one collapses is better. And it's never better. It's always the same. The trust is violated. So we now are going to move into a brand new era. This is very significant. An era where trust is no longer required. Do you realize, people, this is a very important point in my view, that whenever something requires trust, it's already wrong. Think about it. 
It's already wrong if you need to trust. It's already broken if you're asked to trust. So let me give you an example. Do you trust? Who, who, let me let me look at a name here. Let, can, let me look at a name here, people. So I'm going to look at leader because leader face is asking this question, right? So leader face. Do you trust that your profile is leader face? Or do you know that it's leader face? If you were to be with your wife and I invited you to my home and I open the door and I greet you with your wife and I say, leader face, uh, wow, is this your wife? And you say, well, I trust that it's my wife. I mean, she was my wife when we left the house. I mean, she was my wife in the car coming over here. I trust that she's still my wife. You die. Do you understand? Right there in front of in on my stoop, in front of my door, you die. Fuck you mean I you trust I'm your wife. You're dead. When you know there is no need for trust. And why should not we live in a world where we know? Why should we have to trust another man to hold, to, to protect my life? I want another man to protect me. I want another man to hold my, my value for me. Another man is going to take care of it for me. The fuck is that? Bitcoin has come to allow us to regain our manhood, to regain our humanhood. We don't need another man. We don't need another ball headed, three piece wearing, suit wearing white dude that basically says, you, you're too stupid to hold your money. Give it to me. Like, come on. And so I know this is a long securities route to answer your question. When do exchanges fail? They fail if they start fucking around with Bitcoin. But in every case, Giving Bitcoin to these people to hold for you. That's the thing that has always failed in time. It is very difficult to fight back the human urge to take advantage of someone else's power when they give it to you. Will it happen? I say yes. I say that Bitcoin has the potential to bring down the whole freaking financial system if they start fucking with it. And start playing with it. No one who's played paper games with Bitcoin is alive today. Think about that. All of them are dead or in jail. Think about this, people. Every single entity, every single person who's tried to hurt Bitcoin is dead or in jail. That is not by mistake. That is not a coincidence. And it will happen to Wall Street, too. It'll it'll bring about a bare, stern, stern moment that will make the last Bear Stern moment look like a freaking anthill. Let them start playing with Bitcoin and watch what happens. It'll bring down the whole system. It'll bring down all of Wall Street. It'll bring down the international banking system. Why? Because it's the only thing human beings can hold. You see... When the system doesn't allow you to hold your own value, it can manipulate the system because it holds the system. This is the problem with gold, right? The problem with gold is that gold was co-opted. Who owns the majority of gold in the world? Governments. It's finished. It's co-opted by governments. They, they control the supply. And when you control the supply of these other assets, right, these physical assets, you control the supply, you can manipulate the asset. And Bitcoin doesn't work that way. And so when they try to control Bitcoin the way they control gold or whatever, they will get blown up. I promise you. And once again, think about it. No one who has ever played paper games with Bitcoin, no one who's ever tried to hurt Bitcoin, no one who's ever tried to fuck around with Bitcoin is alive today. And if they're alive, they're in jail forever. How crazy is that? Jack T. Swan says, I love the passion. Yeah, man, I, I, uh, I guess get excited, man. Get excited. 
<laughs> Dave says, love these spaces, keeps my eyes lasered. Mine too. Mine too. You guys help me too in this regard as well. Oliver, what Bitcoin miners do you think have the most alpha to outperform Bitcoin and sell to gain more Bitcoin? I got mixed feelings on this, you know, mixed feelings on the Bitcoin miners. So it's sort of like, I don't know, Senator Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren going over a cliff, but in my brand new Maserati or something like that, you know, like I, it's, I have mixed feelings. You see, because... If, if this is something that you do artfully well, it is, you have a talent for this. I, I've done nothing with my life except trade the market. So I would fall into that category. I think that the majority of people over time are going to lose trying to trade miners or anything for that matter for Bitcoin. I think that over time, you can do studies on this that instead of trying to trade a miner for more Bitcoin, instead of putting what you trade in the miners in Bitcoin itself, over time, that line that there's two lines, the miner line for Bitcoin and just the Bitcoin straight line. I think that line supersedes the miner trading the miners for Bitcoin line over time. I think it wins that turd it's like the the tortoise story right the tortoise the tortoise wins because it never stops but the miners stop so the miners are are cyclical items you have to be a very good cyclical player with the miners there are times when you don't want a miner at all and there are times when yeah you might want exposure to miners and so it depends on who I'm speaking to. If I'm speaking to a very talented market player, then by all means. But I'm mostly not speaking to that. Most people are mere mortals. Successful traders are not mere mortals, people. They're not human. This is what I've been preaching this for 30 plus years Successful traders are not human. They have become unhuman to be successful. They feel differently. They think differently. They see different from the average human being. You have to dehumanize yourself to be a good trader. Most people are mere humans. They're mere mortals. And so for that reason, my message is don't trade. Like, guys, I have a trading business and I tell you not to trade. That's my main mis message. And, it, and it, it, it trips people up all the time. And people say, well, Oliver, but aren't you a trader and you're telling us not to trade? Yes, I'm telling you not to trade. The odds are against you. You're going to fail. You're a, mere, you're a mere mortal. And it's okay being a mere mortal. And thank God today you don't have to trade. You've got Bitcoin. That has outperformed every trader on earth. What the fuck do you need to trade for? You got the best trader on planet earth, Bitcoin. It's beat us all. It's beat every trader in the world. It puts Warren Buffett to shame. What the fuck do you need to trade for? Guys, in the new world, in the new world, the digital life, the digital world that has taken our pictures, our photos, our photos away from us, our movies away from us, our mail away from us, our, you know, our relationships away from us. It has taken everything away from us, right? It has taken away the need to do all this other bullshit. Bonds? Who the fuck needs bonds with Bitcoin? Are you kidding me? Oh, well, I get this interest. Who needs interest with Bitcoin? Don't be a dummy. Oh, but it doesn't have cash flow. Who the fuck needs cash flow with Bitcoin? Are you stupid? Oh, well, it doesn't have earnings. Who needs earnings with Bitcoin? Get this through your thick skull. It's a new system. It doesn't need anything from the old system. Stop thinking from the old system. Stop thinking you need anything from the old system. You need nothing. This is from a religious point of view. I told you I spent most of my childhood in life, life in church, right? From a, If I were to put this in religious terms, this is becoming naked. Naked is, you know, being stripped. 
naked is being is is symbolic for becoming like a baby, becoming innocent again. You know, there's a saying in 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 the Christian faith. There's this parable, right? That a camel. Many of you've heard this, right? That a camel. It is easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, many of you have heard this, right? It is easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, when I used to hear this as a child, I used to think of the needles my mom used to use to sew a hole in my pants because I ripped it playing baseball outside or something like that. But then after further research, as I got older, I realized that the eye of the needle was was meant to be sort of like the little small doors that entered into these high walled kingdoms. They used to call the doors eyes and the doors were rather small because it was mostly wall that protected the city against outsiders from outsiders so the, they would never want a big door to enter into the city because a big door could fit an army so you would make the door into your city small an eye as it were and so when merchants would come with their wares to sell to the city dwellers. They would travel on camels with their merchandise from wall city to wall city to wall city. But to enter into the city, they would have to bring the camels first to their knees. Now think of the symbolism in this, right? They would bring the camel to their knees. This is a humbling. You have to be humbled. So the camels are brought to their knees. Now, the camels have all of this stuff on top of them, right? So they're brought to their knees first, and then they are, they are divested of all the merchandise, all the riches. They are divested of their riches. And it is only after they are brought to their knees and divested of all the things that they have collected, all the things that they were carrying, they have let go of everything. Then they crawl. Each camel crawls through the eye of a needle, the eye, the door of the wall city. And then the camels go in on their knees into the city. Now, the city represents freedom. The city represents heaven. The city represents liberty. You understand? So it is easier for a camel to fit through the eye of this city, to enter into the kingdom of heaven, the city of liberation, than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven now. What is my point here? My point is, is that we have to be brought to our knees. We want to enter. We have to be brought to our knees. And everything that we've been carrying from this old system, every belief, every notion, every idea that comes from the old system, those are the riches. Those are the things that we're carrying. We have to divest ourselves of them. They don't belong in the city. You can't enter the city with your riches. You, The riches from the old system, you can't enter into the new land. The new land is Bitcoin. This new digital world, we can't bring the old system. So this idea that, oh, it doesn't have earnings, fuck earnings. It doesn't have cash flow, fuck cash flow. That's, those are riches from the old system. Do you understand? They don't work. Who needs them with Bitcoin? You don't need them in this new city. And you're going to have to drop them. And when you drop them, when you divest yourself of them, as you humble yourself and you divest yourself of them and realize that you were a fucking asshole, then you can enter into this new land, this new city. And then you see it as clear as day. OMG. This is what happened to me, people. And so, no, you don't need trading today. If you have a talent for it, then OK, that's very different. But that's eight percent of the population. Ninety two percent shouldn't even think about trading shit. 
You should think about putting every single you should think about be. Well, in, in one sense, guys, we're all traders. In a sense, we trade our time for value, for money and so forth and so on. But we should just be doing that. I'm putting any excess in Bitcoin, moving it to the parallel system. You understand? That's what we should be doing. Sophisticated one says, I agree. I've been saying it for years. Satoshi planned the four year having with presidential elections. That's right. He's too smart to not have understood this. I agree. And there's very little in at least in my limited investigation. I seen very little that hasn't been almost like it's just done on purpose. Is it the difficulty adjustment that happens every 2016 blocks? That's it. Every 2016 blocks, there's a difficulty adjustment. This is the adjustment that really, truly makes Bitcoin a living, breathing entity. It's conscious. It gives its consciousness. So it consciously makes an adjustment without any human intervention. Guys, can you understand the power and how amazing this is. Do you really get this? That there is not a single human being running this? Like what else on planet Earth is not run by human beings? What protocol? What system? There isn't not only Bitcoin, not a single human being runs it. But it's running without human intervention. Are you fucking kidding me? Holy shit. It's breathing. It's breathing every 10 minutes. It's adjusting to the environment every 2016 blocks. Now, 2016 is a very interesting number. Why do you come? Why does Satoshi come up with 2016? Like, what did he fucking pull that out of a freaking hat? Did he have like just a bunch of numbers and just said, okay, let me just pick a number. Oh, this one's 2016. Let's make this the the difficulty adjustment. No, every 2016 blocks. Is meaningful. Why? Because when you flip those numbers around, it stands. It's if you flip the numbers around, it's sixty one oh two. Sixty one oh two was the act under President Roosevelt that confiscated gold from all of its citizens. That hidden message. Wow. 2016 flipped around sixty one oh two. And so. I've just found all of these almost miraculous things that are not, they can't, it's so consistent in so many that you have to, it can't just be by chance. It can't be. It's freaking brilliant. Wild, right? Crazy. Anyway, guys, um, four posts, four reposts, 17 likes. That's it. 17 likes. That's it, guys. How many people do I have on here? I don't even know. I can't even see this. Can I see the number of people? Those are rookie numbers, guys. Come on. Give me some likes, man. <laughs> you got me you got me a rookie number rookie like numbers. What is up with that? All right, I, I must be boring you. Um, when do you think, Val saying, when do you think the top will be in for BTC this cycle? I think January 2025. No, I think that's too early. I, I think, if, I mean, you know, I can't listen. All we can do is use history as a guide. Otherwise, what if you're not using history as a guide, then what the fuck are you using? A, f- a freaking coin? Like you're flipping a coin? Like you have to use history, right? And and history is not perfect, but it's the only thing we have. No. Nope. What else are you going to use? A dartboard? Like, all right, so we have to use history, right? So if I use history as a guide, it's late 2025 every time. Every having, it's l- the year after the, pre- it's a year after presidential election time. So from presidential election time to the next year, is the biggest, most exponential part of the cycle. It's a one-year exponential run. It's a two-year run up to that point. But the exponential part of the run is one year from presidential election, from, think of it this way, November to November. Now, 
I challenge you, I, I encourage you to do this, to not just take my word for it. You go on Trading View, pull up the weekly chart of Bitcoin, and just go back every four years. We're in a having year 2024, then go to the having year 2020, then 2016, then 2012, and you will see November to November is the exponential part. In 2020 and 2021, it was November of 2021. Go back and look at it. And then four years back from that, it was 2018, you know, 2007, 2017, five years, November of 2017, more or less. Boom, finished. And then five years before that, it was the, the other November. So to say January, that doesn't make sense to me based on history. I don't know where you get that from, right? I just go by history and people fight me on this. You know, like, oh, because of this and because of that and this and that. And I'm like, dude, listen, why would you bank on something that never happened instead of banking on something that has always happened? Like, I never get this. I, you know, guys, look, I, I train traders and give them my money. That's what I do. Right. I train traders to do the right thing. Give them my money because I can't be at every place at the same time. So while I'm trading Apple, someone could be trading Microsoft. I can't trade Apple and Microsoft at the same time. So that's what I do. Right. And I will tell you, I've been doing this for 30 plus years, training traders. Right now, I've seen this so often and it has never failed to baffle me. I've never it's never failed to baffle me how people will come up with a scenario in their minds that never happened before. It's totally mental fabrication, right? And they will place more faith in their mental creation than what has always happened. Like, and I've never understood this. Like, why would you create a movie in your mind that has never happened and then see what has always happened and then place more credence more faith, more conviction, and worse, your money. Put your money on your mental creation versus what has happened every single time. Like that doesn't make sense to me. So if the Bitcoin bull cycle tops out around November, the year after every single having in its history, why would you choose to believe something else that has never happened? Because what hasn't happened is just a mental creation in your mind. What has happened is fact. So people fight me and I'm just giving them facts. I'm just telling you what is always done, dude. It is. I'm, I'm betting on this until it stops doing it. I'm not betting on your mental creation. I'm not betting on some theory that has never happened. I'm betting on what has happened. I'm betting on facts, bro. You want to fight me for betting on facts? Okay, then have fun staying poor betting on your freaking mental Disney movie. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to go, man. I got to go. I'm going to go grab something to eat. But anyway, man, I thank you guys for coming. I, I can't I still can't see how many people do I have here. Can I see how many people I have here? It's probably like just 20 people. You guys suck. All right. Go to work, guys. You got a few weeks. You got a few weeks. Go to work. Go to work. This is your wake up call. Go to work. Ciao. Boom. My name is Oliver Velez, and I am your 13% or Bitcoiner. Be safe out there, and until next time. Boom.